Okay, so next up we've got a short little section, section 7.2, uh, Wampus World. And in this section, the text introduces us to a very, 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 very simple game that is going to serve as the basis for uh, explaining uh, several concepts over the next couple of chapters having to do with, you know, basic logic and reasoning skills by an AI. So let's just dig into the Wampus world and explain how it works, what it's about, and, you know, just go from there, right? So Wampus world, very simple game. Basically, you got a player that's moving an agent from room to room, and it's trying to avoid this uh, enemy called the Wumpus who can eat the player, right? Now, the Wumpus can be shot, right? It can be shot by bow and arrow, and the player has just one arrow, okay? Now, the individual rooms, they can have uh, either gold or traps, right? And so, traps take the form of a pit that the player could fall into, and if the player falls into uh, a trap, they're dead, right? So fall into a pit, die. Uh, if the player enters the square with the Wumpus, player dies, okay? And player can move, you know, north, south, east, west, and can also shoot the Wumpus with an arrow, or they can shoot an arrow in one of those directions, north, south, east, west, but only get one arrow, get one shot, that's it, okay? So figure 7.2 kind of gives you an idea of what the game world uh, looks like. And um, let's talk about the P's task environment uh, description, right? So what's the performance measure? Okay, if the player manages to escape from the uh, dungeon, and that's where this is all taking place, is in, uh, it's in a dungeon, uh, plus 1,000, right? So player makes it out with the gold plus 1,000. If the player dies in uh, a pit or the Wumpus eats them, uh, minus 1,000, right? So for each action that is taken, minus one point. And if you have to fire the arrow, minus 10. So there's your performance measure. What's the environment? It's a dungeon that's made up of a four by four grid of rooms. And the agent begins in square one, one as we saw in figure 7.2, facing in the right direction or the uh, eastern direction. Okay, so the Golden Wumpus themselves have random start locations. So at the beginning of the game, the Wumpus could end up in any one of these squares and the gold can be in any of those squares as well. Okay, now each square has a 20% chance of having a pit in it. Uh, except for the starting square. Starting square is exempt because if the starting square had a pit, well, then the game would be over before it even started because, you know, the player would fall into it and die before they even had a chance to do anything. So that's the description of your environment. Uh, what about the actuators? Uh, so you can move forward. Um, you can turn right 90 degrees. You can turn left 90 degrees. Uh, you can perform a grab action, which is to pick up gold. You can shoot, which is to fire the arrow in a straight line in whatever direction the agent's facing. And you can do a climb action from square 1-1 one, one to exit the dungeon or exit the cave. Okay, So, you know, I said north, south, um, east, west, but you could also say, um, you know, turn left, turn right. Um, shoot in the direction that the uh, that the player is facing, and that arrow is going to go through every single square. Right. So these are the different actions that you can take: move forward a square, turn left 90 degrees. So facing matters. Turn right 90 degrees, pick up gold, fire your arrow, uh, climb out of the out of the dungeon, out of the cave. Okay. So those are the actions you can take forward. Rotate left 90 degrees, rotate right 90 degrees, fire your arrow, climb out of the cave. So, what about your different sensors? Okay, so you got five. So, you can detect, or the agent can detect a stench. Okay, and what that indicates is that the Wumpus is one square away from 
you know, where this player is. And I keep using the term player and agent interchangeably, but, but um, you know, the agent controlling the player, okay? Um, so, you can figure out that the Wumpus is one square adjacent if the sensor detects a uh, stench, right? If a uh, sensor detects a breeze, that means there could be a pit one square over. Glitter, if it detects that, uh, there's gold in the square that the player is currently in. Um, bump, hit a wall. Okay, so you can, if you try to move to the right and you detect bump, hit the wall. Scream, you can detect, the, you know, you have a sensor that can detect or it can hear the wumpus dying. Okay, and it can be heard, not heard, <laughs> it can be heard anywhere. Okay, so the list of percepts, right, because you can perceive a stench, breeze, glare, whatever. You can receive those as a list. So, you know, stench, breeze, none, 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 for example. You know, you received, you smelled something, you detected a breeze, and then no glitter, no bump, no scream. Okay, so this is describing a environment that is discrete, static. It's a single agent environment. Uh, because even though you have the wumpus which will eat you if you walk into its square, it doesn't move, right? It's 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 kind of a glorified hazard square, okay? And the environment's partially observable because you might detect the stench, but you don't know ex exactly which square the wumpus is in, right? Or a breeze, you won't know exactly which square um, the pit is in, okay? All right, so the agent player has to overcome the initial ignorance of the world, right? So you don't know where anything's at until you can figure out where stuff is at. So how is that going to happen? Have to use some reasoning, have to use some logic, okay? Now, as it turns out with this game, with these rules, most of the time, you know, the player, the agent can get that gold and escape. Right now, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, uh, occasionally the agent's going to die or can escape the cave, the dungeon, you know, the environment uh, with nothing, no gold. Okay. So, what about the agent's initial knowledge base? Right. Um, well, it's going to know about the rules and it's going to know that it's in that starting square, which is safe which is square one, one. Okay. So let's play through a turn, right? Let me, let me describe how this plays out um, based off of this figure here, figure 7.3. So initially the agent, as denoted in the legend by an A surrounded by a square, starts off in square one, one. Okay. Now uh, in square one, one, that's a safe square. And it has its first percept list. And let's say that that percept list is no, 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 right? So that means no stench, no breeze, no glitter, etc. right? So from that, the agent can ascertain that the adjacent squares are safe, right? Um, because it didn't smell anything. So there's no wumpus in the immediate vicinity didn't detect any kind of a breeze, so there's no pit uh, in the immediate vicinity. So the adjacent squares, because of that, are safe to move into. Okay, now going from uh, the initial square, one, one, agent decides to move to the right. Okay, could move up, could move to the right, could move north, could move east, and uh, once it decides or we decide to move to the right, then we're going to get a new um, percept. Okay, could have moved north, could have moved east, could have moved up, could have moved right. Could get a new percept. Okay, so what is that percept? Okay, so here's that sequence, right, or that list of uh, what the actuators reported none, breeze, none, none, none. Right, so takes a breeze in square two one 
So because of that, there must be an adjacent square that has a pit. Now, which square has the pit? Don't know. But we do know, what we do know is that square one, two and square one, one don't have the pit because of our previous state, previous situation, when the agent started off in square one, one. You know, didn't detect anything there. As soon as we moved to the right, detected a breeze. So that's gonna tell us that that pit has to be in either square two, two or square three, one. Can't be in one, two because of previous information. Can't be in one, one because of previous information. But after the move, detect a breeze, it has to be, if it's gonna be anywhere, it's gonna be in two, two or three, one. All right, so what's the only safe move? Now that pit could be in two, two or it could be three, one. So the only guaranteed safe move for the agent, for the player to take, would be to backtrack to square one, one, and then head north to square one, two. Go left and then up. Right. So once that happens, looking at figure 7.4, uh, on the, uh, the A portion of the figure, um, that's our new, our new situation, right? So, uh, in this situation, the um, agent detects a new set of a list of precepts, right? So detects a stench. Everything else, the actuators, all the other actuators report nothing. But the uh, smelling actuator reports stench, right? So that percept is stench, none, none, none. So if in square one, two, we got ourselves a stench, well, then there's only one place that the wampus can be. We already knew from previous experience that there was nothing in 2-2, two, two, right? Um, and I say that, but I mean, there was no wampus in 2-2 two, two because when we were in square 2-1, you know, we didn't detect any kind of a stench, okay? So once we moved to square 1-2, detected a stench. So, so since 2-2 two, two must be free, that means that the wampus has to be in square 1-3. Now also in square one, two, our percept sequence here, our list, no breeze detected. So guess what? The uh, pit couldn't have been in square two, two because no breeze, right? So that means that the pit must be in square three, one, okay? So through all of this, uh, I guess you could say process of elimination or, you know, based off what we've learned after every single move, we're able to eliminate possibilities. We're able to nail down where things must be logically, okay? Now, since we can't move, you know, looking at the, at the, the game world labeled A, right? We can't head north because we know that the Wumpus has to be there. Um, we could move east, Right? We could backtrack to one, uh, one and we could um, go to two, one, but then what are we gonna do? If we can't go right to three, one, because there's a pit there. So what we can do is we can move uh, to the right, okay? That would put us in an okay spot. And we've already visited that square. That's what the V is. That's what the V is indicating here. We visited those spots. So we could move to square two, two, and then at that point, um, from there we could move um, north to 2-3, right? Now, if we move the 2-2, two, two, we don't perceive anything new, right? It won't tell us anything about square 3-2, but we could move up to 2-3, and in square 2-3, we would know that the Wumpus, because of previous knowledge, is to the left of us, but if we detect that we have um, glitter, right? If we get a percept sequence that says glitter, then you know here's here's our percept sequence after those two moves. If we detect if we detect stench, breeze, glitter, none, none. What does that tell us? Right. Well, glitter means there's gold in the square. Stench, there's a wumpus nearby, but we already know that there was a wumpus to the left of us because of you know what we talked about previously. Okay, now if there's a breeze, we know that there's not gonna be 
a pit to the left of us because there's already a Wumpus there. And we know that there's not a pit below us because we've already visited that square. So the pit has to be in either square 2, 4, or 3, 3, right? So what we have here is a situation that through moves and detecting using our sensors to detect certain percepts, we're able to learn about the world and we're able to logically deduce what must be true about that world, okay? Because we're experiencing things about the world, um, we know what a basic set of rules are, and then using those rules applied with what we've perceived at a particular instance in time can help us to flesh out the world, even though you know we don't have perfect knowledge, even though we can't see everything um, all at once, right? We can deduce, we can reason, okay? We can infer. Okay. So that's the basics of Wumpus World. Summarize, you know, you're gonna have an agent that's gonna have a knowledge base. It's gonna be trained with the basic rules of the game. It's gonna know that it's a start in a safe square, square one, one. You have the five different things you can detect. You can detect glitter, you can detect stench, you can detect a breeze, you can detect um, a thump, right? A bump if you run into a wall. And you can detect a scream if you fire your arrow and hit the Wumpus. Now through um, a series of movements and through your uh, sensors, those five sensors we talked about, perceiving the world, we can deduce, we can infer, we can reason about what must be uh, the state of the world as we move through the world. And that can help us to make safe decisions within that world.